We're going to start uh, talking about vectors. Vectors are quantities in the physical world that have both magnitude and direction. Um, and they also obey the rules of vector addition. Vectors are also mathematical abstractions. Uh, so what I'd like you to do right now is take a moment, uh, get out your reference table, and um, go through and list all the vectors that we've studied thus far. All right, uh, you should have uh, looked at your uh, reference table and you saw we had a bunch of equations on the back on uh, mechanics. Uh, that's where we started the year. Um, and you saw an equation that looked like this. Now, what does that equation tell us? It tells us average speed, or is that velocity? Huh. Equals distance, or is that displacement, divided by time? Well, it could be, this could either be average velocity, or it could be average speed, and this could be displacement or distance, depending on the context. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that this is average uh, velocity, equals displacement divided by time, and average speed equals distance divided by time. Velocity is a vector. Okay, they both start with V, so that's easy to remember. Um, velocity equals displacement uh, divided by time. Displacement is a vector. Speed equals distance divided by t time. Speed is a scalar. It starts with an S. They both start with S. Speed is a scalar. So um, uh, speed equals distance, which is also a scalar, uh, divided by time. So let's uh, take a moment and talk about uh, these different vectors. In order to define velocity, we must first talk about something called displacement. Let me give you an example of a displacement. Phil goes from A to B. Phil starts here, and Phil walks all the way over here and ends here. Okay, there's Phil. His displacement is from A to B. That is different than if Phil had gone from B to A. So displacement would be like this, and let's say he went three meters. Okay, so Phil's displacement is three meters that away. So displacement is from where you started uh, to where you end. Now, <clears throat> let's do a, a little problem with displacement. Um, Sally walks uh, three meters north, then uh, two meters west, then uh, uh, one meter south. Okay? What is Sally's displacement? What I'd like you to do right now is get out a sheet of paper. Draw a scale diagram. You'll need a ruler, and uh, you'll need to make a scale. And uh, draw a scale diagram of this. Uh, I want you to calculate her displacement algebraically, and I also want you to uh, draw a scale diagram and determine her displacement graphically. Uh, one uh, meter equals uh, three centimeters on the page, multiplying by ones, uh, and we get nine centimeters. All right, the meters divide out, and we get nine centimeters, and uh, so this would be, it's gonna be nine centimeters. Uh, this one's gonna be six centimeters, and this one's going to be three centimeters. That way it's north. So we have three meters north. That's three meters. Let's make sure we are indeed west. So I line up my bullseye right there. Put it, take it back there. That's two meters west. Grab the protractor. So. 
and uh, we could measure it um, 0.6 centimeters. So how many meters is that? Well, let's multiply by ones. And here's my scale. So I want the centimeters to go away, so I'm going to put centimeters in the de denominator and meters in the numerator equals 2.87 meters. And that's fairly close. And let's see if I measured the angle, what I would get. That should be 45 degrees. Sally started here. Do, 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 right? But we could replace that with that. So Sally had a displacement of 2.83 meters, 45 degrees west of north. Okay, so she started here at A and she ended at B. We had a scale diagram. Now this is just a sketch. Sometimes we sketch, sometimes we draw a scale diagram. Um, so here we have, and she went from here to here, and uh, this is 45 degrees. All right, that's the displacement. Uh, sometimes we want to know um, what distance did she cover. Um, things like runners and things like that aren't concerned with where they started from where they ended. Uh, they care about how much distance do they cover? How much exercise do they get? Or if you're designing shoes and you want to see how, how quickly they wear out, you care about the distance covered, not so much the displacement. Um, so uh, she actually, she went three meters north, then two meters, then one. So actually the distance she traveled was actually uh, six meters. So she traveled six meters distance. Um, <clears throat> all right. Uh, distance is a scalar. Sometimes we want distance, sometimes we want displacement. Um, now, one of the, um, probably the most, one of the most important reasons we define displacement is because we want to define a quantity called velocity. Velocity, of course, is defined as displacement uh, divided by time, some time interval. Um, and velocity is a vector. Uh, whenever we have a vector on one side of an equation, uh, we're going to have it on the other. Uh, uh, we can't have just direction on one side of a mathematical relationship. They're on both sides. So velocity equals displacement divided by time. And of course, the velocity is, dis uh, the velocity is in the direction of the displacement. And actually, this is the uh, average velocity is displacement divided by time. Uh, why don't we do some, uh, why don't we try a vector problem with velocity? Why don't we get back to Sally? Now Sally, uh, after her walk, decided, hey, it's time for a swim. So she's going to swim across a stream. Uh, this is a bird's eye view. Uh, let's say the stream is 20 meters wide. 20 meters wide. And uh, the stream, of course, flows. That's what streams do, they flow. Um, so uh, we have uh, the stream has a uh, velocity uh, this way. Uh, going this way, uh, velocity of the water is that way. And Sally is uh, going to swim in the water because it's hard to swim out of the water. She's gonna swim in the water uh, and she's going to go directly across this way, she, relative to the water. She's, she's just going to look at it and say, okay, I got a stream going that way. I'm going gonna, gonna to swim straight. So she's, she's going to swim straight relative to the water. So the velocity of Sally is that way. All right. So let's say uh, the magnitude of the velocity of Sally. Magnitude is just the amount. Vectors have magnitude and direction. Um, so the velocity of Sally, the magnitude of the velocity of Sally is, oh, let's say three meters per second. She can travel three meters per second, and the magnitude of the velocity of the water is two meters per second. Okay? Now, this is the velocity of Sally relative to the water. Uh, and uh, this is the velocity of the water relative to the land. So the question is, 
Uh, how fast is Sally going relative to the land? Well, not just how fast, but what is Sally's velocity? Why don't you uh, find the velocity vector of Sally relative to the land? One of the uh, nice things about vectors, or I don't know if it's nice, it can be nice. Um, one thing about vectors is they have magnitude and direction. They can be moved. They can be moved in any way you like them. So you can see I drew this vector here and this vector here for velocity. Well, um, we're going to add them using the tip to tail method. And we have, uh, I'm going to move, I'm going to start off with uh, velocity of Sally. I'm going like that. Uh, she's going three meters per second all that way. And uh, the water is going at two meters per second uh, that way. So relative to the land, um, Sally is going like that. Let me redraw it here. Relative to the land is 3 meters per second squared plus 2 meters per second squared. 3.61 meters per second is the magnitude. So we have to give her a direction. I, I've been a little sloppy with my, uh, my numbers here, my significant figures. Uh, let's go, let's give that at least two significant figures, both of these, two significant figures, and uh, so we'll give uh, the final answer uh, two significant figures. Um, all right, uh, let's uh, find the angle. Uh, the angle equals theta equals the inverse tangent of uh, two meters per second divided by 3 meters per second. 33.7 degrees. So, uh, Sally's velocity relative to the land is 3.61 meters per second. Let's say this way was north. We didn't really give a direction, but let's give one now. At 33.7 degrees, East of north. The velocity of Sally relative to the land. So velocity is a vector, displacement is a vector, and also acceleration is a vector. The acceleration vector, which is defined next. And really, uh, displacement, one of the most important reasons that we need this idea of displacement is so we can define velocity, how fast something's going in what direction. Um, and uh, because like with race cars or any sort of vehicle or, or airplanes or something like that, direction certainly is incredibly important, uh, as important as how quickly it's moving. Um, and acceleration is uh, the change in velocity, the rate of change in velocity. And uh, we couldn't define acceleration if we didn't have velocity. Acceleration equals the change in velocity uh, divided by time. This is average acceleration, which is all we deal with pretty much in this class. Um, so again, uh, we have a vector on this side of the equation, and we must have a vector on that side. So change in velocity is also a vector. Uh, right, let's try a problem. Um, a a spongy microphone cover is thrown up in the air while it's in the air after it leaves my hand and before it gets to the top um, what I'd like we, what I'd like you to do is uh, determine the direction of the acceleration by drawing a vector diagram all right so you're gonna throw it up in the air and whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, after it leaves my hand but before it gets to the top, I want to know the direction of the acceleration, and I want you to do that with a vector diagram. Why don't you do that right now? All right. Let's use do a motion diagram. So it started off, and it was going fast, and then it's slowing down and getting slower, doing something like that. So we had, uh, call this a V0, 
and uh, we'll say it was slowing down later, V1 and uh, V2. Uh, well, let's get the, uh, find the acceleration between uh, V0 and V1. Um, so uh, delta V from uh, 0 to 1 is defined as V1 minus V0. All right. So uh, V1 is right there, so it kind of looks like this. There's my V1. It's about that big. Eh, yeah, it's about that big. And uh, minus V0. If that's V0, then minus V0 looks something like that. Uh, minus V0 looks something like that. So I'm going to add that tip to tail. Uh, just draw it like that. Minus uh, V0. And uh, we started here. And we end here. So this must be delta V. Delta V from 0 to 1 is that way. It's down. And the acceleration is in the direction of the delta V, so the acceleration must also be downward. Okay, so when something's going up, it's accelerating downward uh, because gravity is pulling it down. Of course, there's a net force pulling it down, so it's accelerating downward. History.